Well, hello and welcome to another Faith Philosophy of Life with me, Mr. Shelton. It's great to see you again, and I hope that you're starting to look forward to next week with Half Term. Well, today we're thinking about prayer and prayer within the Jewish tradition. We're going to think about two particular prayers, which is the Amida and the Shema. And these are things that you might already know a little bit about. But before we get into that, I am going to say uh, this is the time you need to go and grab a pen and paper and then return back to me. So cue the cheesy intro music. Brilliant. Well, I hope you got your pen and paper back. So behind me then is an image of Jews praying, as you can see. They're wearing the school cap, which is known as the Yalmulka. They've got tefillin on their head and also on their heart. And that's to show that God is with her in their mind and uh, in their soul. And they're wearing the tefillin, which is the prayer shawl. OK, all of those are traditional things that Orthodox men would wear whilst they pray. What we're going to do today is we're going to think about the Amadar and the Shema. Now behind me is the Shema, only it's all jumbled up. So pause this clip and see if you can work out what the Shema is. Okay, so the Shema is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And that's a fundamental prayer in Judaism. So our title today is How Do Jews Pray? So let's just get that written down. How do Jews pray? And our learning objective is to explore typical Jewish prayers. OK, our literary objective today is to gain information through developing our listening skills as well. So learning objective to explore typical Jewish prayers. And our title is How Do Jews Pray? So our outcomes then, it's going to be a good outcome if you can retell two of the main Jewish prayers. It's going to be great if you can explain how these prayers help Jews worship God. And even better if you can use some specialist key terms and tie these into Jewish prayers and understanding of God. And remember, Jews write God as G-D because the name God is far too holy to write in Judaism. So during today's session, we've done our jumbled words. We're going to look at what prayer is. We're going to look at the Shema, the Amidah, and then there's some analysis and a poem. And as per usual, any links that you need are found in the description below. So please just access that. So my first question for you to think about is what is prayer? Okay, what is prayer? Okay, so prayer is known as communication with God. And our second question is, how do people pray? Just generally, how is it that you might know that people pray? Okay, so we've already thought about how Jewish men might pray if they're from the Orthodox tradition. However, uh, Jewish women may pray the same way in the Reformed tradition and they're also Jewish women pray quite a lot at home as well and you can see here a Jewish woman writing the Shabbat candles and that's one of the integral ways that Jewish women pray whilst praying they do an action as well. Okay so for this part of the lesson what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through some information with you behind me are six questions and I'd like you to answer those questions in full sentences in your book as you go so just feel free to pause me um, I don't normally go through stuff later though, but I do believe this is probably the best way of getting this information through to you so you need to listen out for the answers as I read through this information and get as many of those written down as you can you can obviously watch this uh, as many times as you need or want so Prayer then in Judaism, this is the purpose. Prayer is the relationship between God and human beings. When people pray, they spend time with God. They pray to serve God. 
with all of their heart, obeying God's command. And this is the command. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13 in the Tanakh. To love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay, you may recognize that. Jews then uh, pray for lots of different reasons and there's lots of different things that Jews think about prayer. So I'm going to go through uh, six facts with you about that now. So Jews, like other people of faith, uh, do pray, but they pray in different ways as well. So they pray so that their hearts can reach out to God. They pray that their hearts can reach out to God. They pray to express and exercise their beliefs. They pray to share in the life of the worshipping community. They pray to obey God's commands and they pray with total concentration on God. There's nothing else that should be on their mind. And lastly, the prayer should be completely said from the heart. There's no point praying something which has no uh, meaning to them. They generally pray three times a day. Okay, that's morning, afternoon and evening. That's three times a day. They pray only using a Jewish prayer book, which is called a Siddur, S-I-D-D-U-R, S-I-D-D-U-R. And this has in it uh, special services laid out for the morning, the afternoon and the evening. It, prayer enables uh, Jews to get better at building a relationship with God. After all, and most things do get better with practice. Now there's lots of different ways that Jews might pray, uh, but here are sort of three of them. There are prayers of thanksgiving, there are prayers of praise, and there are prayers to ask God for things, okay? So there's thanksgiving, praise, and to ask God for things. So Jews believe that God will take action whilst they pray and a teaching from the rabbis uh, in the midrash tells us that the more we ask god for help the more god will love us let me repeat that the more we ask god for help the more god will love us and that's one of the teachings from the rabbis so when we're thinking about question four two things that prayer does for jews well it doesn't just do the things of the words it, it's more than that. It's thanking, it's praising, it's requesting. So prayer then changes Jewish faith. It changes the person praying. Praying with your heart and your mind and your soul takes you into a state which is completely different from everyday awareness. Prayer enhances a person's closeness with God. It enhances a person's closeness with their fellow Jews as well. It's a formal prayer in the synagogue provides a weekly, if not daily, revision to the fundamentals of Jewish faith. It helps Jews remember what they believe and it helps Jews find insights into their relationship with God and with each other as well. Public prayer. Well, there's much of Jewish prayer that consists of reciting the written services allowed in a synagogue. Praying in public uh, is an act of togetherness uh, of the Jewish community. And it's to do with the fact that the individual becomes one with other Jews. So to some extent, they take their particular situations they find themselves in and they put themselves within a larger body of believers. It's an act of togetherness that Jewish people find that they do all around the world. I once saw an amazing clip that talked about Shabbat happening all around the world, even in concentration camps in the 1940s. And the, the comfort that gave the Jews in that horrificness that there were Jews all around the world at all ages that had been doing the same rituals in the same language of Hebrew. By attending regular services and following the order of the prayer book, the Siddur, it is a valuable and spiritual discipline and a mechanism that enables a person to spend time with God on a regular basis. The Siddur is drawn from the writings of the Jewish people across the ages. It contains the wisdom of all the great thinkers and some Hebrew poetry as well, which is considered as being beautiful. Spending time with these prayers enables a Jewish person to absorb spiritual teaching of the Jewish people as well from both from all the ages. This is an extract from the morning services and uh, this is from 
the nature of God. It's about the nature of God as well in Judaism, as well as an act of worship. And it says this in the prayer book. Blessed be he who spoke and the world came into being. Blessed be he. Blessed be he who maintains the creation. Blessed be he who speaks and performs. Blessed be he who decrees and fulfills. Blessed be he who has mercy upon the earth. Blessed be he who has mercy on his creatures. Blessed be he who pays a good reward to those who fear him. Blessed be he who lives forever and endures to eternity. And blessed be he who redeems and saves. Blessed be his nature. Observant Jews say a blessing over everything they eat and drink, and in the face of many natural events as well. Doing so acknowledges that God is in everything. One prayer that he said regularly is, Blessed are you, the Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And that's something that's said before drinking wine. Blessed are you, the Lord our God, the King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And that's something that's said whilst before drinking wine or on seeing trees blossom in the first time during that uh, during that year blessed are you the lord our god king of the universe who has withheld nothing from his world but has created it in its goodly creatures and goodly trees for the enjoyment of human beings okay there's another quote from the sadir so hopefully you will find that you've got the answers now do re-watch that if you're missing anything everything that you need is in there so when we think about our learning objective today we said we'd explore typical jewish prayers and a good outcome would be you could retell two of the main jewish prayers and we've not really done that yet but we, we have done is we've now hopefully extracted information by listening uh, so we've got information from those six questions so we've done our jumbled words we've now looked at what jewish prayer is we're now going to look at the shamer so to do this I'm going to play you a clip now. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to watch this clip and bullet point down six points about the shame of prayer. Simple as that. Bullet point down six points about the shame of prayer. So random YouTube clip. Three, two, one. Here we go. Do you believe in God? Trick question. A relationship with God isn't about what you believe. It's about how you love and how you listen. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. We say it every day, twice a day, in the evening and morning, when you lie down and when you rise up. The simple reason is because the Bible says so. But listen. Shema Yisrael, listen, people of Israel. Shema Yisrael, listen, you descendants of Israel. Israel, the name given to Jacob after he wrestled an angel. Listen, you God wrestlers, that powerful force that pervades the universe, that guides the stars in the sky and breathes divine breath through every blade of grass that flutters in the wind, that Mother Earth, that life force of all that is, is God. The letters that spell God's name in Hebrew can't actually be pronounced, so sometimes as a stand-in for that unsayable word, we'll use metaphors like Adonai, which means Lord. Some people say Hashem, which means the name. But when we say these words, we're really just pointing at what we can't say. Because the closest thing to speaking God's name out loud is breathing. That name, that universal heart beating through all that is, is one. And we remind ourselves every day that we are connected through that oneness. But oneness can feel a little bit abstract. How can we get to know this unsayable universal life force? The way that people have come to know deep truths forever, by paying attention, by listening. So Shema, listen up people. But listening is hard. So often we're distracted or feel pressure to have the answers and just close down waiting for our turn to speak. So before we say the Shema, we say another prayer that reminds us that we can relax. We come in a long line of listeners. The prayer right before the Shema is called Ahava Rabba, big love, deep love, abundant, overwhelming, sweep you off your feet and knock you over with love, love. Because that's the kind of love that God had for our ancestors and has for us. But we're so often too busy to even notice. 
So notice, the prayer says, notice that you are surrounded by, infused with, kept in life by love, God's love, that beating heart of the universe. Pay attention. God, you taught our ancestors your laws and ways, quirky, special Jewish ways that connect us with our roots and give us wings. So we ask God, teach us, help us learn and understand, help us listen, and through listening, help us feel your love. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Lovely. Thank you very much for that. I hope you found that useful. Um, so uh, what we've now done is we know one of the Jewish prayers. Now what we're now going to do is we're going to start looking at the second one, the Amidah. So the Amidah is a prayer that's all about humbleness before God and acknowledging the power that he has over the Jews. So I'd like you to pause this clip and just think for a few moments, what or who has authority over you? What or who has authority over you? Because the Amadar has, uh, it's about God's power or authority over people. Who has authority over you? Pause this clip now and have a think about that. Okay, so I wonder what you came up with. Quite often people would say things like the law has authority over you or parents or teachers. But you may have come up with different things like friends have authority over people as well, which is quite an unusual thing to think about. But you do, you peer pressure is a, a classic way of controlling people. So what I'd like you to do now is to write these four questions in your book. Leave sort of three or four lines between each of them. OK, so these are the four questions. What is the Amidah? How is it said? What is prayed about? And why is it important to Jews? OK, let me repeat those. What is the Amidah? How is it said? What is it prayed about? And why is it important to you? So just write those out now and just leave yourself uh, maybe three or four lines between each of them. Pause this clip to make sure you've got that down. Okay, great. So uh, I'm now gonna play a clip to you, uh, which I found on YouTube. This is really good. Um, and this will go through the Amadar and answer those questions. So listen out for the information that you need. The Amidah is considered the central prayer in the Jewish tradition. It's considered the time in the prayer service where we are most open spiritually and we're really ready to talk to God. The Amidah is known as a silent prayer. And one of the reasons for the silence is because a person shouldn't be distracted from the conversation that they are having with God. But actually, if you go to a more traditional synagogue during the Amidah, it will not be silent because people will actually be sort of whispering, muttering the prayer to themselves under their breath because we are actually supposed to be in conversation, right? We speak aloud to God and God speaks in God's own way to us. We request the God that we be protected, that we be healthy. But, but when it's Shabbat or holidays, we are offering our gratitude to God. We are grateful for the Sabbath, for instance. We are grateful for God's holiness. The first part of the Amidah is the moment where we reflect on our ancestors, being descendants of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and of course in contemporary times we also say of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. And because of their merit, and because of the ways that they interacted with God in ancient history, so too may God be gracious to us and protect us and help us live to be our best selves. As we begin the Amidah, we begin by taking three steps backward and then three steps forward as if we are entering God's kingdom. We begin with bowing before God, right? We bend our knees, we bow down um, as we say the words, Baruch Atah, blessed are you. And then we rise up as we say God's name, believing that it is God or God's presence that can somehow lift the fallen. You will often see if you go into a Jewish prayer service, people using their bodies during the Amidah in one of two ways. Either they are moving back and forth wildly, we call that in Yiddish shuckling, right? As if it is a sort of dance that they are doing with God. Or sometimes in some Hasidic traditions, they actually stand stock still. When we say the Kiddushah, we are actually supposed to rise up on our toes like we are angels. It is an embodied prayer. 
at the end of the Amidah, we take three steps back. We are exiting God's kingdom. We bow to the left, to the right, in front of us as we say this prayer for peace. And then we rise up again on our tiptoes, right? As a way of recognition of all the holiness that we have just been a part of. One of the themes that is um, complicated for a, a lot of Jews who are saying the Amidah is the theme of the resurrection of the dead. But even the idea of Michaye HaMetim, the one who brings the dead back to life, can have meaning even for those of us who don't necessarily believe in the resurrection of the dead, because we understand this concept of being broken. We're talking about those moments that all of us have experienced, a feeling bereft, right? The dark night of the soul, some people will call it. Those are the moments that God can help resurrect us. This prayer that goes back thousands of years can be changed, and it can also be kept as it is and given new meaning, and made eternally meaningful for the Jewish people. Okay, so uh, what we're going to now do just before we start to uh, take you to your final activity, which is the main task, is uh, I'm going to put some statements on the screen and I'd like you to try and identify what the errors are in that. Okay, so I'm going to go through the errors with you uh, shortly, but this is the first one. The Amadar translates as sitting, which makes sense as this prayer is recited while standing. The Amadar was written in the Torah as a formal prayer which can be used during worship. The Amidah was written in the Torah as a formal prayer, which can be used during worship. See if you notice what the errors are there. Okay, the third one then. The Amidah should be an individual's chance to reach God in reflective prayer and should be said loudly to disrupt others. The Amidah should be an individual's chance to reach God in reflective prayer and should be said loudly to disrupt others. And lastly, number four, some Jewish denominations prefer less structured prayers in order to allow for Jews to avoid the subject and not think properly about prayer. Some Jewish denominations prefer less structured prayers in order to allow Jews to avoid the subject and not think properly about prayer. Okay, I wonder if you've got the errors in those. Some of those obviously were quite obvious. These are the first two. The answers are at the bottom here. The Amidah translates as a standing prayer, which makes sense because that's what standing they do. The second one is the Amidah was created by rabbis as a formal prayer. It wasn't in the Torah. The third one, uh, it uh, should be an individual's chance to reach God in reflective prayer. So it should be said quietly so it doesn't disturb others' worship. And the fourth one is that it prefer, some Jewish denominations prefer less structured prayers in order to allow for private prayer to be more prominent. So, so far then, what we've done is we've done our jumble words at the start. We've looked at prayer. We've done the Shema and the Amidah. So we're now going to do a little bit of analysis. So I'd like you to access uh, this file that is linked underneath the description there. Uh, if you need the link, it's http colon slash slash tiny dot cc slash FPL dash Amadar. But as I say, the link is underneath, so you can click on that and that will load it up. And you can have the Amadar on screen. The full text is there for you. The first thing I'd like you to do, however, is to look at the headings. So the patriarchs, which is a really posh term for the elders or, or the forerunners that were male patriarchs. Matriarchs being female, patriarchs being male. So you need to look at that. Look at all the different headings. You've got the power of God, holiness of God, and there's some on the back as well. I'd like you to identify which you think are the most important. So basically, you're going to choose four of those sections. And what I'd like you to do with those four sections is to explain in your work why you think they're important. But not only that, you're then going to create either a prayer or a poem that reflects your understanding about those four. Now you've got parts of the Amidah there, they will be there to help you. But the main thing is that I'd like you to do is to go through that and create your own sort of reflection on the four sections that you have decided. So let me recap. If you're doing forgiveness, for example, then you might do a little very short poem or a little paragraph about why forgiveness is important. Or you might say for um, the power of God, you might say what 
Jews understand by the term God or what Christians understand by the word God or what Muslims understand by the term God depending on where you're coming from. So I'd like you to go through that now and just do uh, four little reflections on four of those sections which you've got from the description below. So this should take you mm, about four minutes a section, about 16 minutes I would guess. So I will see you in about 20 minutes by the time that you've downloaded and had a good read over it. Okay, so uh, welcome back. Hopefully that is now done. So our learning objective was to explore typical Jewish prayers, which we have done with the Amadai and the Shema. A good outcome would be if you could retell two of the main Jewish prayers. Great if you could explain how those prayers help Jews worship God. And even better if you can use some specialist terms and tie those into Jewish prayers and understanding about God as well. So hopefully now you've done that uh, with that final activity. That's it for me really this half term. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to teach you this way. Um, well done for getting through what's been a very trying half term. All I'm going to say to end with is stay safe, wash hands and God bless you. Take care of yourselves and I hope you enjoy the, the next week.